Welcome back to our intermediate algebra course. Today we will talk about section 3.4, the slope of a line. But first, think about the challenge. The, the question is, Frank has three daughters. Each daughter has two brothers. Each brother has one puppy and each puppy has four paws. Of course, they are all healthy puppies with all the paws. It looks like a very simple multiplication problem. How many uh, pals in total are there in Frank's house? Count all the pals for all the puppies that belongs to all the brothers, then you will have the, the right answer. Write down on a paper and we will check at the end of this section. When we talk about slope, we usually remember something that we learn in high school or maybe middle school. Uh, if we talk, if a teacher say, what is slope? Then you remember, slope is the same thing as rise over what? Rise over run. Yes, rise over run. That most students have this memory. And we will use this um, basic knowledge about slope. Remember, rise over run. Look at this ladder. Anything that has a kind of a ramp, uh, a kind of an angle, has a slope. Um, if you look at the ladder, we can calculate the slope of the ladder. The slope will be rise, how much the ladder will reach. On the vertical line, it will reach to 24 feet and how much it goes from this point to the base of the ladder. And this is 7 feet. This is the slope of the, the ladder. Usually we're going to use the letter M to represent the slope. So slope is 24 over 7. And the same concept we will use to find the slope of a linear equation. We have a straight line and we will find rise over run. In the case that we have a linear equation, we have y and x, right? This uh, x, uh, y plane. Run means the change in x the horizontal change and rise will be changed in y the vertical change if we have a graph it's pretty easy to identify rise over run if we have the two points plotted in the graph like on this example uh, i'm gonna show we can find pretty easily the line uh, of the equation, the linear equation, that passes through those two points. This is the line. Remember, the line goes all the way up to infinity, all the way down to negative infinity. And let's, let's say this point here is point number one, Oops. and point one, and this is point number two. If we want to move from point one to point two, not not straight, but uh, we go. We're gonna move first horizontally, one, two, then vertically. We're gonna move one, two, right? So we move it from one to two. We can see that this is gonna be run the horizontal um, movement, and this is rise. So M equals rise over run. We have one, two units is as rise. We have two units as run. We are able to simplify because two uh, over two is equals to one. This is the slope of the line that we, we can see on the graph. Okay, but sometimes we don't have the graph and uh, will be um, better or faster if instead we use a formula. It's a very simple formula. 
look at the formula here, is slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's use this formula to find the slope of the line that crosses, uh, that passes through these two points. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We said this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2. Actually, it doesn't matter. You can say, um, you can change this the other way around. We will have to find the same result. That means this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2. What is y2? y2 is 5 minus y1, 3. What's x2? x2 is 2, and x1, 0. 5 minus 3, 2, 2 minus 0, 2, also equals to 1. See, um, you can find conclusion. We can use the graph. We're going to find the slope, rise over run, or we can use the formula. What about this one? Can you look at the graph and identify the slope? Let's check. Look, that's the line. And we I like to always draw the arrows to move from this point. We will go one, two, three, four, five. But look, now I, I'm going downwards. I'm not rising. We can say the rise is actually negative, right? We're going down five units. So M equals negative five over and to the right one, two, over two. This equals negative five over two. If we try to use the formula, let's check what happens. Uh, let me use a different color. M equals Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We need to find the same answer. Okay, let's uh, hope if we do everything right, we will find the same negative 5 over 2. Say this, it doesn't matter. We can say this is 1, this is 2, and that means this is 1 now, and that is 2. y2 negative 3 minus y1 minus 2 over x2 4 minus x1 2 and i'm so happy because we got the same result look negative 3 minus 2 negative 5 4 minus 2 positive 2 Helpful hints. When you're finding uh, the slope, it makes no difference which point you identify as 1, which point you identify as 2. Uh, you just have to uh, get the y value in the first and the numerator, and then the corresponding x value in the first one and the denominator. That means don't mix up. Don't mix up. Keep uh, using from the beginning of um, uh, your solution to the end of your, your solution, the same numbers for the, the, the points that you've chosen to be 1 and 2. If um, we have uh, the equation in a special form, we can find real quick the slope of the line. And this special form is called slope-intercept form. If the linear equation looks like that, like y equals mx plus b. m is a number, b is another number. m, the number in front of x, will be the slope. Okay. Example. Let's say we have y equals 3x minus 4. The slope will be 3. And we're going to see later that this number, negative 4, 
is the y intercept. Okay, but this just works if you have y equals then a number, a number, let me say a number times x plus or minus another number. See? Look at the equation of this example. Negative 3x plus 2y equals 11. Is negative 3 the slope of this line? My question. Yes or no? If you say no, correct. It's not negative 3 because we don't have y equals ta -ta 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 -ta, right? We don't have the slope intercept form of the equation. But we can change. We can change. We can uh, use additional property, multiplication property. And if we have negative 3x plus 2y equals 11, well, first let's move everything that's nearby y. We will isolate the, the variable y. So plus 3x on both sides. So we can cancel out this minus 3x and 2y equals positive 3x plus 11. Okay. Now divide both sides by divide by 2. All, uh, all terms of this equation you divide by 2 because this will cancel out. Then you have y equals 3 over 2x plus 11 over 2. The slope, we remember, use m to represent the slope, is the number in front of x now, 3 over 2. Next example, I want you to answer quickly, real quickly, what is the slope of the equation? Negative y equals 6x minus 7. Look, this, uh, this one is a bit easier because uh, the, the y variable is already isolated. But we're not going to say we will not be able to say that m equals 6. No, no, this is wrong. Because we still have one tiny little problem. Look, we have the negative here. So we need to change this. We can divide or multiply both sides by negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. And now, yes, now we can find the slope. Negative 6x plus 7, and the slope is equals negative 6. Next, interpreting the slope intercept form. Example, the adult one day pass price for, for Disney World is given by the equation y equals 3.53x plus 67.39, where x is the number of years since 2006. Use this equation to predict the ticket prices for 2026. Uh, th those word problems, sometimes they are scary because they put you in a context that uh, you, you get confused. But this one is actually pretty simple. Let's find what's really important. First, we have the equation. Then the price is y. So we want to find the price. We want to find y. y equals to what? And we need to plug in x. For x equals 0, where, where x is the number of years since 2006. That means in 2006, x equals 0. In 2007, x equals 1. In 2008, x equals 2. See? So one year after 2006, two years after 2006. How many years we will have? Uh, in 2026, after 2006. Yes, of course, x equals 20. Plug in 
y equals 3.53 times 20 plus 67.39. You can use your calculator. Let me find my calculator. Uh, 3.53 times 20 equals plus 67 point 39 and you find the answer y equals let me check again 137.99 and this is dollars right so 137 dollars 99 cents now let's move on we will find the slopes of horizontal and vertical lines. The question is, what uh, is the slope of the line x equals 2? Look, um, you might be confused because this is an equation. But we don't have y, we just have x. If we try to plug in uh, values for, for x, or the other way, if we want to plug in values for y and find x, what is going to happen since the equation doesn't have uh, y? Let's say y equals 0. What's the value of x if I plug in y equals 0? What's the value of x if y equals 1? One? What's the value of x if y equals 2? It doesn't matter. It doesn't depend on y x will always be equal to 2, 2, 2, always 2. So if y equals 0, 2. If y equals uh, 1, 2. If y equals 2, 2. No matter the value of y, we will have x equals 2. And this will be a vertical line. Okay, but that is not the question. The question is, find the slope. What is the slope? If you think about rise over run, let, let's erase all this. Think about rise over run. And then you will have M equals rise over run. What is the value? And let's get two um, random points. Let's say this. This is going to be point 0.1. This is going to be point 0.2. Rise is easy to see. 1, 2. So, rise is 2. What about run? The horizontal change. Can you see any horizontal change if I have a vertical line? Of course not. So, zero. The slope will be a number divided by zero. No matter the, the two points that we find here in the graph, it's going to be always a number divided by zero. And we know that any number divided by zero will be not m equals zero. No, no, no. It will be undefined. Undefined. It's impossible to divide any number by zero. Remember? So the slope is undefined. Our vertical lines have undefined slopes. Uh, that's confirmed here. Undefined slope. The denominator uh, in the slope is zero. Uh, and the numerator will be different from zero. So uh, we cannot divide a number by zero. What about the next example? Y equals three. Uh, look, thinking the same way. Let's make a table. X, Y. Now I will plug in values for X. X equals zero. X equals one. X equals two. And find Y. Plug in um, X equals zero. Y equals three. Plug in X equals one. Y equals three. Plug in x equals 2, y always equals 3. No matter what, 
we don't have x in the equation, so x will not change. y will be equals to 3 all the time, all the time. And this will result in a horizontal line. All right? Again, that's not a question. It's a horizontal line. But what is the slope of the line y equals 3? Well, let's think again uh, about rise over run. m equals rise over run. Any two points. Let's say this is point 1. This is point 2. And then we move one unit to the right. So run is going to be one. How many units will move up or down? Nothing. Zero. Zero units up or, or, or down. That means the slope is zero. Always uh, zero because you're going to divide zero by a number. And every time you divide zero by any number is equal to zero. The slope of the line y equals 3 is m equals 0. All horizontal lines have the slope m equals 0. That's confirming. For any two points, the y value will be equal to the same real number. And we have the, 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 the rise will be 0. One thing to, to, that uh, uh, helps me remember this. Think about a guy walking uh, on this ramp, okay? Think about a guy walking. If the guy is walking on this flat line, it's like a flat surface, um, how hard is it to, to climb a flat surface? You actually, it's not hard at all, right? So m equals zero. Every time you uh, this line gets uh, more slope, is harder and harder to climb. Harder and harder to climb. Think about the guy. The slope is increasing in value. If the slope increases, and this is a lot of effort to climb, if the slope increases, is more uh, uh, effort to climb. But think about this one. How can a guy climb a vertical line, a vertical surface, like climb the wall? If he doesn't have a rope, right? It's impossible, impossible. I mean, it's undefined. Another uh, helpful thing uh, about slopes, if the, the ramp goes up, Think again, the guy climbing, and he's always going from left to right. He's going up. That means the slope is positive. If, uh, on the other hand, if the guy is going down from left to right, the slope is negative. Comparing uh, the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. That's another thing we can do. Uh, with our knowledge about slopes, let's say we have parallel lines. Uh, what can you say about this slope? Let's call this line 1 and this line 2. What can you say about the slope of line 1 and the slope of line 2? If they have the same angle, uh, the guy that's climbing those two slopes they are doing kind of the same effort, right? Yes, you were right. They are both the same. They have the same value. What about if the... But, well, parallel lines is kind of easy to visualize and understand. Perpendicular lines is, uh, is a bit tricky. I think we, we're going to need to kind of... Um, not memorize, but remember this, okay? The slope, let's say the slope of one line is A, M equals A. The slope of the perpendicular line is going to be 
reciprocal, 1 over a, and negative. So negative 1 over a. So let's say line 1, line 2, m1 is a, m2 equals negative 1 over a. And another interesting thing, if you multiply m1 times m2, we will always find negative 1, if they are perpendicular, as long as the lines are perpendicular. Okay. The kind of question you can find on your tests uh, looks like that one. Say you have the equation 6x plus 2y equals 9. Let's say this is line 1, okay? Is parallel to the equation negative 3x minus y equals 3. And let's say this is line 2. We have to find m1. What is m1? What is m2? And compare to, to, to know if they are parallel or not. Let's split. First, let's work with 6x plus 2y equals 9. Remember that we have to isolate y to find the slope. So remove the 6x from this side. Let's uh, leave y alone on the left-hand side. And now divide both sides by 2. Divide all the terms by 2. <coughs> then we have y equals negative 3 over 2, x plus 9 over 2. On this example, we have to determine whether the line 6x plus 2y equals 9 is parallel or not to the line negative 3x minus y equals 3. Uh, let's say this is line 1. This is line 2, okay, and we have to compare the slopes. We have to check if they have the same slope, but I cannot see the slope right now. The, the equations are not in the slope intercept form. What I'm going to do is, for each one of the equations, let's say, okay, this is 1, this is 2, Equation 1, 6x plus 2y equals 9. Uh, let's simplify and isolate y, and we will be able to find the slope. We're going to be able to see the, the value of the slope. To isolate y, let's remove this 6x here, cancel out. So now we have 2y equals negative 6x plus 9. Divide both sides by, divide everything, every term by 2. And finally, we'll have y equals negative 6 divided by 2, negative 3, x plus 9 over 2. The next equation is negative 3x minus y equals 3. We have to isolate y, so remove from the left hand side the 3x plus 3x on both sides this will cancel out and we have negative negative y don't forget this negative sign here negative y equals 3x plus 3 but we don't want negative uh, y we want y so divide everything by negative 1 and finally we will have y equals negative 3x plus 3. Compare the slopes. Negative 3, negative 3. Yes, the uh, lines are parallel. Parallel lines. Next example. Now we have to tell if the lines are perpendicular or not. So determine if the line x plus 3y equals negative 15. Let's say this is line 1, 
is perpendicular to the line of the equation, negative 3x plus y. Let's say this is equation or line number 2. For equation 1, x plus 3y equals negative 15. We can um, isolate, as usual, we're going to isolate uh, y, subtract x on both sides, remove this x here, okay, cancel out. Then we have 3y equals negative x minus 15. Next step, multiplication property of equality divides every term by 3. We want to cancel the 3 in front of the y. So now we have y equals negative x over 3 is the same thing as negative 1 over 3x. Okay. And 15 divided by 3, 5. Now let's go to the other side of the paper and equation number 2, negative 3x plus y equals negative 1. Isolate y. We will add 3x on both sides, plus 3x plus 3x, and this will cancel out, and we have y equals 3x minus 1. Need to compare the resulting um, equations. Actually, is the, the we didn't change, we did not change the equation. We just changed the form of the equation. And this is the um, slope intercept form that we can see the slope, negative 1 over 3. And this is the other equation in the slope intercept form. We can see m equals 3. Compare the slopes. And if we multiply negative 1 over 3 times 3 equals 2, 1 times 3, negative 1 times 3, negative 3 divided by 3, negative 1. So, yes, they are perpendicular. All right, and finally, we can have a question like this last example find out if the following lines are parallel perpendicular or neither option the same uh, thing same method i'm gonna do it a bit a bit quicker since i uh, you understand how to to operate right we need to isolate y so in this case, plus 5x on both sides. So we have only y on the left-hand side and 5x minus 6. The other equation, x plus 5y equals 5. Subtract x on both sides to isolate y. 5y equals negative x plus 5. Divide both sides by 5. Then you have y equals negative 1 over 5x plus 5. And finally, compare the slopes. 5, negative 1 over 5. They are not the same, of course, but if you multiply 5 times negative 1 over 5, this is equals negative 1. When we find negative 1, that means... Yes, they are perpendicular. They are perpendicular. Those are... Okay, this is an extra uh, work. We don't need to go through it. Um, let's uh, now check the answers for our challenge. Frank has three daughters. Each daughter has two brothers. Each brother has one puppy. And each puppy, of course, has four paws. How many paws are there in Frank's house in total? Of course, if you did a multiplication, like three times, two times, four, 
and you found 24, 24 puppies, this is wrong. This is not the right answer because you have to pay attention here. Each sister or each daughter has two brothers. And if you think about a family, this is a family with three sisters and two brothers. For each daughter, the two brothers are the same. So the multiplication is, you don't have these three. Two times four, and the answer is eight. Eight paws. You have two nice puppies with eight paws in total. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, don't forget to answer all the questions on my lab math about this uh, section. And I uh, hope to see you again on the next uh, meeting.